you know, I would consider John an expert also on on produce specifically. Um, I want to find out your take on conventional versus organic. Um, you know, do you what, what's what's your perspective on that right now uh, as we look at that? So, I mean, <laughs> I have a problem with both conventional and organic because I, I just have a general problem problem with the industry, the produce industry as a whole. Because the produce industry as a right, tell whole, tell us, take the gloves off, John. Tell us, <laughs> yeah, bam. Um, you know, I mean, once again, just like any industry, they're out there for to make a profit. They're out there to make money. You know, when when the farmer in the produce industry and in these big mega farms that are growing monocultures, are they thinking, hey, I want David in Austin to have the best quality, most nutritious, highest phytochemical antioxidant and best tasting peach he's ever eaten in his freaking life and he's going to orgasm when he eats it no i don't think that at all <laughs> they think how can i get david the peach so that he buys it with his money and i don't really and, and, and it still looks good because as long as it looks good <laughs> he'll buy it and even if it tastes like crap has a mealy texture because the peach has been put in cold storage because they don't have multiple temperatures of refrigerated trucks they have one temperature and especially with peaches if it gets too cold, it gets cold damage, and then they, they never ripen up, and then they get all this mealy texture, which I'm sure many viewers have, have seen this. So it's like, I don't know, the produce industry is just out there to make a buck, and I'm not the biggest fan, so I encourage you guys, like you can see behind me, this is my garden from this year. It's about about it's about 30 days be be ago, so now it's a lot taller. But literally the ones on these si this side is called... Uh, water spinach this was planted literally about 60 days ago from when this photo is taken i mean when wow. i planted them they were this tall and i have a video on that on my gardening channel and then in, in 60 days man there's just like more food than i could even eat so i mean this is how easy it is to grow your food yet everybody is enslaved to going to the grocery store to buy their food when you could you could grow your own or you can go wild harvest things right and there's so many things that are easy. And like, honestly, I mean, I live in Vegas. It's the second hottest city in the United States after maybe Phoenix. And even, I mean, it, like almost three months, it's like over 100 degrees. We hit a world's record, I think, of 120 degrees. So it, everything in my garden was over 118 degrees. So what, if I eat something out of my wow. garden, am I automatically cooked because it's over 118 degrees? <laughs> <laughs> No, man, because the plants, you know, they, they take up the water and they they tr transpire like we perspire to cool us down. And, you know, the enzymes are still alive in my plants. Otherwise, they wouldn't be alive. But nonetheless, I really want to encourage people to grow their own. And then after that, if they can't grow their own to get out of the whole produce industry, go visit your local farmer's market. You know, talk to your farmers, get to know them. So at least you're buying local. This is going to be also usually much higher quality than the industry can provide you. And of course, you know, so that's what I do. Actually, I eat out of my garden primarily. I see what's in season, what I can harvest, what I can make out of it. And then I go to local farms. My normal shopping days, Tuesdays, I go to the two, I visit two farms every week during the season, buy stuff from them. And then I eat my stuff, their stuff. And then if I still don't have enough, enough food to eat, then I'll go and buy organic food you know, just from okay. the industry. So I think really this is a much more sustainable way to live. And also it's going to ensure you're going to get a higher quality food, which means you're going to be a higher quality person because unfortunately in, in the raw foods movement, there's not many people that talk about produce quality. And I think there needs to be a lot more um, because I mean, if like if I, if I grow the same lettuce out of my garden, I could eat like, I don't know, half a head of lettuce. Meanwhile, if I buy it from the store, and I'm satisfied after like a half a head of lettuce. If I go to the store, I got to eat two heads of lettuce to get the same satiety. That's because, you know, the lettuce I'm growing has a lot more minerals and different phytochemicals because I'm usually growing purple or red lettuces. And the store, you know, you might, actually I did buy iceberg yesterday to go, go in my juice, but you're getting romaine and it's significantly different levels of the phytochemicals, which I believe to have a lot of ben human benefit and one of the re many reasons why the raw vegan diet works. So, I mean, making your your short answer too long, unfortunately, which is what I do a lot, it, uh, saying just so if we just had to choose between conventional and organic, I'll say each have their own pros and cons. And I would encourage people whenever possible and practical to buy organic because two reasons mainly. Number one, you will be avoiding absolutely 
man-made synthetic pesticides. And you could get, you know, you could get too much residual pesticide load in your body, and that can cause disease as shown in published studies. You can look up Environmental Working Group, the Dirty Dozen, and the Clean 15. That's what specifically they go into. I, I have a video on my OK Raw channel where I go even deeper than EWG because I go into the data that the U.S. government or USDA provides on the sprays on specific produce items. So we could see how many times, like if you buy cilantro, I think cilantro was one of the worst things you could buy uh, conventionally grown because in general, it's sprayed a lot. And that's what, you know, and then it actually the, the study that I got into showed like imported versus domestic produce and actually it showed like domestic produce, like I think for, especially I think was it for fruits were sprayed even more than imported produce, hmm. which was kind of crazy. But nonetheless, we want to stop eating these man-made chemicals, petrochemicals that can build up and accumulate in our bodies you know, some of which, yeah, may not be able to be easily detoxified, such as PFAS. Um, so that's number one. The number two reason why I'd say to go for organic is because in general, but not always, there are uh, usually more higher levels of plant phytochemicals. So plant phytochemicals are, say, like the lycopene in tomatoes, you know, or the different kind of color pigments in the leaves, and these are basically nutrition for us. So like there's more antioxidants uh, in there, I guess, is a, is a simple way, if you don't understand all these complex things, uh, to say it. Because basically what happens is like all the plants behind me, like I don't spray any chemicals on them. You know, in the forest, you think, OK, how does everything in the forest grow when there's no men spraying fertilizer or, you know, spraying, you know, Roundup or pesticides on the forest? Do, do bugs eat? the forest no we have a full forest that's because the plants have over thousands of years created their own immune system their own defense system to prevent the bugs in their area from eating them and these okay. are the plant phytochemicals that we call phytonutrients that are beneficial for us so like anthocyanins which make different leaves uh you know the purple or reddish color or what plants produces so like now these plants that are red color like this morning, I filmed a video of my false roselle, which are actually red leaves. You know, think about it. Red leaves burn a lot less than green leaves or leaves that are kind of like light yellow because it's like just like people that are light skin or dark skin. Dark skin people don't burn as bad. So, they have you know, more melanin. It easily the melanin. Yeah. But so these anthocyanin compounds in the plants don't allow them to burn as much and give them, you know, protection. But also when we harvest them and eat them, now we get, you know, maybe four to five times more nutrition as well. <laughs> and so people don't realize this. So that's why if we don't spray things and the plant is basically forced to use its own defense systems to create more of these plant defense chemicals that then we get to eat, which are actually nutrition, antioxidants, polyphenols, and have been shown in studies to be things like anti-cancer, which I had a recent video on on my OK Raw channel. So yeah, that's what I'd say. And then of course, you know, do I buy conventional produce? Absolutely. I'm not perfect behind it. So like, like there's certain things that I could buy that are organic and certain things that are just not available. So for example, if I wanted to eat jackfruit, I live in Las Vegas. Okay. If I wanted to eat organic jackfruit, okay, yes, I probably could get it if I call my friend up in Florida, buy an organic jackfruit from him, he could ship it to me. He'd probably charge me $2 a pound, maybe $3 a pound for the fruit, and then I have to pay another $20 for shipping. I'm not that rich. <laughs> so I could go to the local store here where they import jackfruit, not organic, it's conventional for 50 cents a pound when it's on sale, right? Okay. And I'll buy it and eat it because I love my jackfruit. <laughs> but so, you know, I, I try to minimize my consumption of, um, you know, conventional food, but I will buy it in some instances if they're on the clean 15 list or if the quality would be significantly better organic. So, for example, I mean, I hate to diss on organic food, but it's rare to get really good organic mangoes unless they're the California keep mangoes that are just coming into season now, mm. usually for sale at Whole Foods, because they're the organic mangoes, they're not really well produced in foreign countries and they then they pick them way too early and then they just never really ripen up or get sweet. Whereas conventional mangoes, like they're usually usually way better. Like mm. they ripen up better or they're way sweeter and stuff. So like this week I bought conventional mangoes from Mexico, Keats actually, they're really good. Well, they could be better, but I'm waiting for the California ones. I mean, those those cost a lot more. So, 
you know, it really just depends. Like all my leafy greens, it's rare that I'll buy non-organic leafy greens unless it's from like a farmer at the farmer's market that I'll question and ask him what he's spraying on his crops. Uh, but generally, uh, I'll buy maybe maybe some fruits that are conventional. But if I if I could buy it organic, then of course I'm buying. I'm going to buy it organic. And and are they honest with you when you uh, when you ask them what are you spraying on your crops? Do you, do you feel like you're getting a straight answer? It depends. So I mean, besides just asking them. I also am using my perception and looking. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that depending where you are in the country, um, you know, that, that some people at farmer's markets are simply just reselling produce and they're not even the growers. Okay. So, I mean, that, that happens to the farmer's markets here in Las Vegas, whereas most people selling produce, the farmer's markets are just basically buying wholesale produce and reselling it as if they grew it and trying to like live that charade. States like California have laws against that, actually, and you shouldn't be doing that if you're in California, although I still see it happen. And I could tell what I know what, can, you know, just like industrial produce looks like. They're all symmetrical. They're all even looking. Sometimes they have coatings on them, the way they're cut off the plant and how they've deteriorated at the stem. Hmm. So and then so like even if I ask them what, what I'll ask them what you sprayed on it and then, you know, I want to see how they answer. And then I ask them, hey, what are your fertilizer practices? Like, hey, can I come visit your farm? You know, these are all indicators. Like, if they don't want you to visit the farm, you know, they make some crappy answer up on some things that sound shady. I'll just go to the next guy. But then also could look at the quality, and then I ask him to try it. Not that I could taste any pesticides, but it's also good besides just the pesticide residue, but to have something really good quality, you know? Okay. Like, have it taste well, better and taste more, not just sweet, like, it, it specifically for fruit, but like have like a flavor depth, right? Okay. Um, yes, I, I I totally agree with this. I've been saying this myself. We we need to sound the alarms. Um, the the level of quality of produce in in America it is shocking, and and we can talk all day about the benefits of superfoods and raw foods, but the when when they're not getting the soil quality, the phytonutrients are not getting into those plants, and then we're left with this subpar uh, product and, and you wonder why people don't get excited about fruits and vegetables. I mean, the stuff in the supermarkets is, you know, it's, it's sad. And so um, listen to what John's saying. Um, what about one of the ways you can get around this is making your own 